Buongiorno cari amici e benvenuti. Happy holidays to everybody and welcome to my kitchen on the cliff. Since we're still in the midst of the holiday season, I'm going to make a dessert today that is loved by everybody because it is not only delicious, little balls of dough dipped in honey. They're called struffoli, and in Sicilian they're called pagnucata. So if you ever heard that word from your grandmother, that's what they are. It's the same thing. They're made all over Italy. And uh, they are not only delicious, but really beautiful to look at, decorative and very festive. They're always decorated with sprinkles, you know, those Italian sprinkles, and uh, decorated with candy cherries. I'm following the recipe from my book, Sicilian Feast, which has just come out in a third edition. And uh, that third edition will include beautiful photographs that our cinematographer Francesca has done. So here we go. We use three cups of flour and we're going to heap the flour on the measuring cup and then whisk off the top. So one, two, and three. We add a pinch of salt. We make a well. We're going to add our eggs, fresh eggs from the Pugliese farm in New Jersey. That farm was owned by my dear friend, Josephine Lissandrello's grandmother. And they're still producing these fabulous eggs, very fresh and very good. So now I'm going to Beat this. Okay, you beat the eggs with the with a fork, and as you beat the eggs, you incorporate some of the flour. You can do this in a food processor or a KitchenAid, uh, but I just wanted to do it by hand because why wash a bunch of machines when you can just do it this way? So I'm incorporating flour into the eggs. I'm using my hands to really combine the ingredients. If you find that your dough is too stiff, add two tablespoonfuls of uh, vegetable oil. If you find that it's too loose, add two tablespoons full of flour. But always add these things one at a time. You add one tablespoon of oil or flour so that the dough remains very, very soft, pliable, and silken. All the flour has been absorbed by the dough, so I'm going to add a, you know, a dusting of flour and I'm going to knead it. You don't want the dough to be sticky. So if it's slightly sticky, just add a teaspoonful of flour, dust your surface with the flour. This is pleasant to do, it's therapeutic. You end up with a beautiful dough and you will make a magnificent treat out of this. This is the final shaping. We're going to shape it into a ball. We're going to add a few drops of oil so it doesn't form a crust. And we're going to cover it with a bowl and let it rest for 20 minutes. Now the dough has rested for 20 minutes. I'm cutting it in half and I'm now cutting it into small pieces and shaping each piece into a rope. The ropes should be a little bit thicker than a pencil. Making struffoli during holidays is a really a family affair. Everybody can get the little flower on themselves and tell jokes and laugh and just enjoy, enjoy the doing. I'm using my favorite tool, the bench scraper, to cut the struffoli into little pieces. I use a bench scraper to gather them up and put them in a dish. The bench scraper is a multitask tool. It's, it's wonderful for cutting. Something like this where you don't need a, a knife, the bench scraper is much easier to use because you can push down on it and it cuts perfectly. Last rope. Our struffoli are now ready. They've been cut and now we will deep fry them. Before you begin frying, 
you're going to get a pan covered with paper towels and whatever you fry is going to be placed in that on the paper towels so that the towel will absorb whatever oil might be left over. Now I'm turning the heat on to medium and I'm going to take four or five pieces and do a test and when those are the color that you want, which is beautiful golden color, we know that the oil is the right temperature for the rest. What I'm doing is just pressing them down under the oil so that they turn. Okay, here we are. And they are all completely dry. There's really no uh, oil residue. But if there is, the paper towel will absorb it. By the way, any time you are deep frying, you must have a cover next to you because should this flame up, which can happen, you take your cover, you cover it, and the flames will disappear. Hopefully that will never happen, but this is a precaution. See, these are the things that make us fret sometimes. Oh, it takes too long to do this. Well, it really doesn't. And of course, as our Aunt Anna in Rome used to always say, il lavoro iniziato è mezzo finito. The work that is begun is half finished. That sometimes it's more painful to think about doing it than actually doing it. You watch these carefully. You don't walk away ever from anything that you're deep frying. But you watch and you see when they're all a kind of uniform golden color and then they're done. You don't want them to brown. You want them to be just golden. And here we go. The last, the last batch. Turn the gas off and they're all done. While we let this through fully cool, we're going to make the glaze. Now, anytime you're measuring honey, you will take spray and spray the, the uh, cup. Okay, the reason for that is half of it won't stay in the cup. We are going to measure one cup of honey. I use my wok, a small wok for this, and you'll see why, because it's very large and I can mix it very easily. So I'm going to pour the honey into the wok. Now, using the same measuring cup, I'm going to measure a quarter of a cup of orange blossom water, just two ounces. Pouring the orange blossom water into the honey, I'm now going to measure a quarter of a cup of sugar and I'm going to add it to the honey. Lastly, I'm going to zest an orange right into the pot, right into the honey. Keep turning it. This, of course, is my microplane, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen, a lovely woodworking tool that was brought into the kitchen by a creative cook. Just keep turning the orange so you don't get too much of the pith because that tends to be bitter. This orange then can be a snack for the cooks or you can save it for later for a, an orange salad. Now we're going to heat this honey over a low flame. We want this to come to a boil and then we turn it off. You see the bubbles? It's just beginning to come to a boil. This is what we want. We'll give it a quick stir. As soon as we see the bubbles on the surface of the honey, we're going to turn it off. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to turn it off and we're going to drop our struffoli into the pan. We lost a few struffoli, but we have plenty more. Okay, now we're going to give it a good stir. 
I'm arranging this on a footed platter because everything looks better raised from the surface, from the table, because they, they just make everything that's in them more dramatic and more beautiful. And of course, the most recognizable uh, feature of Struffoli are the sprinkles, uh, tens of thousands, non pareil whatever you want to call them. But that is the wonderful festive addition to this dessert. We will decorate it with candied cherries. A green and red is holidays and Christmas and the Italian flag and whatever you want it to symbolize. Now that you know how to make struffoli, don't wait for the holidays. Make them anytime you need a quick dessert because they are so delicious. Now let's see if they are delicious. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I'll have one too. Hmm. If you're not already a subscriber, do remember to subscribe and enjoy 2023. Happy New Year to all. Felice Anno Nuovo and may we have peace among the nations. Meantime, I'll have a piece of this. I'll have one too. <laughs>